I've done several thousand explants and the series we published on PCR testing of explant specimens to look at the problem to see if it's bacteria, see if it's fungus or, or mold, or is it mycobacterium? And predominantly, overwhelmingly, it's bacteria. In inside the implant? So Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Because I've heard some people are like, oh, yeah, the, they opened it up and there was mold and all the stuff in there. But then you hear, well, no, it's not permeable. So that's not possible. So what's uh, the truth there? I published a paper just to just put that to rest because right? it's not the thing. And I don't want people. But mm -hmm. in general, um, we published the paper to show that in 29% of almost 600 consecutive explant specimens, it's bacteria, and it's particularly cutie bacterium acnes and staph epidermidis. Now that's important because another paper published last year by Dr. Mathun Sina, wonderful scientist at uh, Indiana University Medical Center, published a paper showing that that bacterial interaction from the staph epidermidis in uh, it interacts with the fat, uh, say the fatty acid, oleic acid in the breast tissue. So it used to be thought that the shell was basically uh, impervious, right? You know, the the scar ca scar tissue didn't allow anything to happen. But that's not true. So you can have interaction between the bacteria that's stuck inside and then the breast tissue. And that interaction... You know, we've talked a little bit and we said oxidative stress. So it causes, an, it causes an oxidative reaction and that creates something called oxylipin 10 home. So hmm. that can be tracked in breast implant illness patients' blood in this research study that he published. And it's higher and it contributes to problems with macrophages. And that's where you get the immune system activation and that leads to many of the chronic symptoms that we see. So okay, think of okay. like joint and muscle pain, something like that. And yeah. so, you know, I've, I've tried to introduce that scientist to laboratory companies to help get a test, but there's no test right now. That was done in research, but it helps explain that, okay, we have my study and others that say there's bacterial contamination on these, we found it on explant and mine, because it's such a large series, I just, I say it's 29% because it's in a big number, almost 600. And then you look at his study that found oxylipin 10 home. So this is a biomarker now.